So today we are learning how to, how did I describe it? Um, something about navigating architectural drawings. Isn't that what I said? Navigating and drafting in architectural drawings. Okay, so, so far everything we've done, we haven't had to care a whole lot about things like scale, um, right? But there is some of our universe where scale matters. So um, here is, for example, uh, uh, let's see, oh, that's just an image. All right, never mind. Uh, this is a kind of drawing you would get maybe from a technical director or something of the, sh the show, the space that has like the scenery on it and stuff like that. Um, now in this case, you know, it, it's all, the, the section and the ground plan are all in one file. Sometimes they'll be separate files. Um, I can't decide which one I prefer, but uh, this one is all in one file. I actually kind of made this one because uh, the one thing that, that you'll, you're going to find a little bit is that the people who tend to draw the, make the drawings of the theaters tend to be the technical directors. And the technical, technical directors care mostly about the stage. They want that to be really accurate because that's where they have to put all their stuff. And then they really don't pay a whole lot of attention to how accurate the actual area where the audience goes. It, you know, they, it's not super important to them. Uh, but it's super important to us. So for example, if you look here at the balcony of this section view, you see how these lines are all wonky? Um, that's because the drawing that came from the TD had like, was missing like four rows and the rake of the balcony was wrong. Um, and I was like, that is not right. And I went in and measured it and, and just like tweaked it to make it the slope right and the number of rows correct. Um, and just strip, move, move their stair steps and lines around and just never connected them back up because I don't really care about that. I just wanted to have the ability to like have the balcony be right, okay? So sometimes you're gonna have to kind of clean these things up a little bit. Um, and I'm not gonna get too deep into drawing in architectural drawings. Um, I think if you really wanted to learn how to do that, you should go take like a, the technical graphics class or something from the TDs because they'll learn all about that. But the main thing I want you to understand is like when you get a drawing like this, what do you do with it? And how do you use it? Uh, because in this case, this thing is drawn to scale. And I can prove that to you by just measuring something. So like let's measure this doorway. Um, if I use that measure geometry tool for distance, let's just measure how wide this door is. Look, three foot zero inches. That sounds like a real door. Right? <laughs> uh, so this thing is drawn in scale. The, all the lines are a very specific length based on the very specific dimensions of this actual theater. Uh, which again is super important to people like technical directors who have to draw, have to build actual scenery that has to fit in these actual places. Um, Scale tends to not be a super important thing to, to us, but you can, if you don't uh, wrangle it correctly, you can cause yourself some problems. So let me explain to you how this was drawn. And when you, if you took that hand drafting class, this is one of the things that you would learn, is there, th when you are gonna draft a ground plan, for example, the first two lines you draw are a line called the center line and a line called the plaster line. And the center line is basically the, the center of your drawing, the center of your room, okay? And the plaster line is, if I go like here, the plaster line is usually this line between the upstage edge of the proscenium opening, right? So like this line is my center line, and this line is my plaster line. And those are the two, first two lines you draw with a pencil when you're doing hand drafting of a ground plan. And the reason is, is that you have to have some reference point. Everything has to be drawn relative to somewhere. And that's how you do it. So that intersection of that center line and plaster line, that is your zero comma zero. And then you draw everything relative to that. That's just the base of your grid. 
Um, and the same thing, you know, that same strategy is used in CAD. Like they'll, they'll put that origin at that intersection of center line and plaster line. So if you want to figure out where things have to go in real space, uh, you have to get that origin in the right place, okay? Uh, so you're probably not going to have to do a whole lot of drawing inside of things like this, but the main thing that we would do with a drawing of a theater like this is, is we would do what I call a loudspeaker plot, um, which is where you're trying to show where your loudspeakers are going to go and where you're going to aim them. Those are the two most important parts of this. Where does it go? Where does it point? Um, I am less concerned in this kind of a drawing with how does it get there. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, you could say this loudspeaker is going to go here, and it's going to point here. And getting it to that place is probably going to involve some rigging and some rope and some chains and brackets and stuff like that and you know and definitely you need to figure that out but I, I personally prefer to not try to you know overcomplicate the loudspeaker plot with that information because I just don't think that information is super important when you're just trying to show people where your stuff's gonna go and where it's gonna point I would always prefer to just create a separate drawing that would be like a rigging diagram that says here's how it gets there Here's how I think it's going to get there, right? And you would show that to a, to a rigger and say, can you like fix this and make it so it doesn't fall? And, uh, and they'll fix it, and they'll figure out how it gets there. Hard, ra very rarely does the sound crew really have to deal with the rigging, because we're just not qualified to deal with that. Almost always, you know, you just will bring whatever your speaker is, and you set it there and say, it needs to go 30 feet up from this spot, right? <laughs> And somebody who is expert in rigging will get it to that place, right? They will hang the point, they will hang the motor, they will do the whatever, and you know, there will be, somebody will come in and pre and often pre-hang all those points, right? Before you even come in the room, like if you're doing a big stadium show or something, you know, riggers will come in and they will pre-hang all the motor points and everything. So it's all there. It's all all you have to do is attach to it, and then they hit a button and the thing flies out. All right, um, and you'll take a rigging class as a student here. Um, and that's not so that you can become an expert rigger. You won't, because it's just one class. Um, and one 15-week class does not make you an expert. Um, and when you're talking about things like rigging, you could kill people if you do it wrong. And, um, and I don't know about you, but I don't want that responsibility. Uh, and so I want to know just enough to know whether my idea is a good idea or a bad idea. Um, and then I let the experts figure the rest of that out. So I don't waste a whole lot of time trying to figure out how this stuff is going to get to the place that I'm going to put it. I use the little bit of information I know about rigging to just know whether I think it's theoretically possible. right? I think, oh, there's, I, it looks like there's maybe something to attach to somewhere near there. I imagine that a rigger could figure that out. Um, and the whole reason I'm giving this whole speech about rigging is not that I'm going to teach you anything about rigging today. It's just to say that even though this is drawn in scale. And even though all these lines actually correspond to actual lines and objects in real life in this theater, I personally don't think that means that you have to draw all your loudspeakers to scale. <laughs> uh, for a really important reason, which is that, remember, what are, the two, what are the two bits of information you're trying to communicate when you're plopping loudspeakers into this thing? I said it. Where does it go? Where does it aim, right? Uh, if you are drawing all your loudspeakers to scale, let's say you have a little teeny one like this, like a little Meyer MM4, and you're going to draw that to scale. It's four inches, you know, in, in size. Four, it's a four inch by four inch box. If you're going to draw that to scale in this thing, yeah, let's just see what that looks like. <laughs> so I'm going to do a line here. We'll do four inches by four inches by four inches, and then I will close it. That is the size of a Meyer MM4. And let's say I'm going to use that as a front fill on the edge of the stage. And I'm going to put it right there. 
and maybe I'll even hatch it and make it solid. Okay, I'm just quick and dirty here. Now I zoom out to my drawing. Where does it go? <laughs> yeah. It's like, what did I even draw there, right? If the point here is where does this go and where does it point, I can't even see it. Okay? So, yes, in real life, that is how big it is. And you know what? If someone really wanted to know, like sometimes I'll get like set designers or something, they'll come back to me and they'll say, are they really that big? And it's like, no, they're not really that big. I'm, that's just, I, I just drew them big enough so you know that there's going to be something there. Well, how big are they going to be? And I'll say, like this big. And they'll say, oh, fine, right? You want me to draw it? No. It's like, <laughs> it's like I get it, right? Uh, so I just think that that is silly. Uh, even though this is technically a scale drawing and all of that. Um, and I know a lot of people that really will get, you know, super into downloading the, because most, most uh, loud speaker manufacturers will make scale CAD drawings of their loudspeakers, right? So you could actually get a drawing of that actual thing that's in scale, and you could put it in here and have it in scale and put it in, and, and yes, that would technically be correct, but it also is not always the easiest thing to read. And it's harder to, I think, to get the information. So, yes. If you were scaling up like every possible like, array, like you scale them, would you really put it in scale? Then? Hardly ever put it in scale. Um, the, I mean, I. If it's something teeny like this, I'll make it way bigger than that. But uh, you know, but if it's like a, if it's a last bigger, it's like two feet. I could probably draw a box that's approximately that size. I'm not going to like get it down to the, you know, eighth of an inch accurate, but I can draw it approximately that size. And if it's readable, I'll leave it, right? Um, I'm just saying, don't give, I don't waste too much time on making it perfectly the right size. Focus on, can I see it? And do I understand where it goes? Because ultimately someone has to look at this drawing and then hang your loudspeaker in the right place. Are they going to be able to do that? Are they going to be able to know where it goes? Um, if it's that tiny, no. <laughs> so would you write like a note in there? Like, Absolutely. So in my title block, I would make a note that says, loudspeakers are not to scale. <laughs> uh, and then everybody knows, and they know not to freak out. Okay. Uh, and there are, you know, the TDs and scene design folks of the world, they will freak out. Right when you draw these boxes, and they'll be like, "That's is that really how big it is?" Like, no, it's not. Uh, I'm just trying to be, you know, clear here. Right? We will figure out how big it is later. Okay, so that's my little speech about that. And, you know, you're here to do what I say, right? That's that, that's the deal here, right? Uh, someday you might go work for somebody else who really cares about drawing them in scale, and you should absolutely do what they say, right? If, if you are making a drawing for somebody that's like, hey, they all, I want you to get the actual blocks from the manufacturer and I'll put them in there and do this, then absolutely do it that way. They're the one that are paying you and you do whatever they say. But for now, I say that's stupid and, <laughs> and don't draw them to scale, okay? So how do we do this? Uh, what I have given you for your assignment is if you look at this, so this is the, this is the assignment. I have said you are going to take that drawing of the Stevens Center and you are going to draw some loudspeakers at these places. So I have given you XYZ coordinates of the actual locations of where these loudspeakers will go in the actual Stevens Center. Wow. Okay? Uh, so, for example, center cluster top DMB7, that's loudspeaker. Location, X, Y, Z, that's where it's going to hang. Aim point is this is where you're going to point it. You're going to point it to a spot in the room at that co those coordinates. Okay? How do you know where those coordinates are? Yeah. So this is X, Y, Z. X, where is 0X, where is 0Y, and where is 0Z? 
Yes. But now you have to put it in a specific spot. So where is the specific spot of 0? Z is vertical, right? This is a 2D drawing, yes. Right. So uh, if I was going to figure out where these go in the ground plan view. So let me, I'll, draw, I'll draw a loudspeaker. I'm going to do one of them for you. OK? Um, we'll do it together. I'm going to do that. Uh, we'll do this first one, the center cluster top DMB Q7. Uh, so first thing I need to do is make sure that 0, comma 0 is in the right spot. And remember where I said it goes? The intersection of these two lines, the center line and plaster line. Okay. So how do I get 0 to be there? Because it's not right now. right? If I hover my cursor over there, look, it says 2 and 3 16 inches on the x and negative 59 feet 7 and 3 16 inches on the y. That is not 0, comma 0. So you're going to type a command called UCS. UCS stands for Universal Coordinate System, I think. Sure, enter. And it says, specify origin of UCS. And you, it. and you put it in the spot you want it to be. Wow. So if you've got your snaps on, you should get an intersection point there at center line and plaster line. So just plop it right there. OK? Now, now it says, OK, where, where, which direction does x point? Where is it supposed to go? Well, if you're me, x is out to the audience. OK? Yep, so I'm going to point positive x out towards the audience. OK? So I just find some intersection point that direction that intersects with my center line, and I snap x to there. OK? Now it says, where is y? And you can put a new spot, or you can just hit accept, because it'll infer y based on you know, where x is. So I can just say, yeah, accept that. OK, there we go. Now, if I let me just draw a point here, and I'm going to plop it in that spot. OK? Now, if I snap to that point, look at my little coordinates now, down to the bottom right. 0, 0, 0. Ooh. OK? Yeah. Yep. Yep. No, just hit enter. There you go. Yeah, but now you're zero zero zero. So actually, click you know, put a like click on that line, the cent the center line. Yeah. See zero zero zero. Wow. Right. Okay. Um, now here's the next thing that I would suggest. Look at my coordinates. I'm saying x is 14.6446, y is 0, and z is 39.6097. Those are not in feet and inches, are they? And yet my drawing is. OK. So what do we have to do here? Yes. So the first thing we need to do is change our units. So because this is how TDs draw. They draw in inches, architectural inches, so feet and inches. It's fine. That makes sense to them, because that matches their tape measures when they have to build stuff in the shop. Yeah. That's fine. That's how they have to work. That's not, it's not dumb. That's just how they do it. It's just that it's, that's not super useful to us, <laughs> because we will never pull out a tape measure <laughs> and do anything with it for when we're setting the sound system up. We just aren't. So. Uh, decimal feet are much more useful to us. So yes, we're going to type units. And we're going to say um, decimal. And click OK. And I'm going to save this as a new file, just so I don't overwrite my original. Uh, you can overwrite it. OK. Now, OK, so now I'm in decimal, right? So let's measure something now. So um, 
let me go and measure that same doorway just for fun, OK? So I'm going to measure this from here to there. It says 36. I thought it was a three-foot door. Why does it say 36? Because this was drawn in inches, not feet. One unit equals an inch in this drawing. I would like one unit to equal a foot, because that's how my coordinates are that I gave you. Um, the main reason for this, by the way, is that when we use other programs like Ease, for example, uh, Ease wants you to put things in decimal feet, usually. So, uh, or decimal meters or whatever, but we tend to, so what do we have to do? Units. We already did units, right? Well, you can, insertion scale just means when I bring a new drawing into here, like maybe I've got something that's already drawn and I'm going to put it in, how should, I in, how should AutoCAD infer those units? Because remember, AutoCAD is inherently unit-less. Okay? It doesn't actually know that things like inches and feet and meters exist. It just knows that units exist. So when you pull in an AutoCAD drawing, it just sees that there's a box that is 10 units tall and 4 units wide. And insertion scale just means, what is a unit? to you. Is a unit an inch? Is a unit a foot? Is a unit a meter? Uh, so changing that is not going to change your coordinates. All that's going to do is say, if I bring anything in, how big should it be? We have to actually scale this drawing. Do you want to change any insertion scale? Uh, if you're going to insert other files in here, like if, like if you are going to go and download CAD files of loudspeakers from the manufacturer, and then you're going to like insert those in, then yeah, you want to make sure the insertion scale matches, right? Um, so uh, here's what we have to do. We have to actually scale this thing. So you're going to type the word scale, enter, and it says select objects. Which objects would we like to scale? All of them. All of them. So you're going to type the word all, enter, scale. Type the word scale, and then it says select objects. You're going to type all. Enter. And now it's still saying select objects, but I have selected all of the objects I'm interested in selecting. So I'm just going to hit Enter again. Now it's going to say specify base point. Base point is it's going to scale it, but it's going to scale it up or down from which starting point. Doesn't super matter, um, because we're just going to scale the whole thing. But just for clarity's sake, I'll go ahead and either click here or just type 0, 0. All right, now it says scale factor. Specify scale factor. Um, you can try to do this with your mouse, but I would not recommend it. Um, scale factor. What is my scale factor? How much do I want to scale this? Yeah, so it's, I, right now I have got 12, inch, 12 units for every one unit that I actually want. Right? So I want to take 12 units and turn them into one unit. So I, my scale factor would be 1 divided by 12. So 1 slash 12. OK? So type 1 divided by 12, hit Enter, and everything just got a whole lot smaller. You see that? So now I can zoom in. Ba, 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 ba. And let me go measure my door again. If I did this right, it should say three. Yep, three. Yay! We did it. We did it. <laughs> now all those coordinates that I gave you will line up in the correct places. Yes. Yeah. Do we change the origin every time? Yes. Okay. So We're gonna, you go to one and you draw everything and then you go to the next Yeah, one. so I'm going to show you that right now. So, uh, <clears throat> so here we go. Here's what I'm going to do. But yeah, the reason we have multiple views here is that we also have, obviously have the section view. And then we've got two ground plans because what, this one is the, is the orchestra seating level. Mm -hmm. And then this is the balcony. And they overlap. And so you need two separate drawings to see the entire balcony and the entire orchestra. OK, so that's why. All right, 
So uh, which one should we do? Let's do uh, the balcony righty. <laughs> Just saw that. I expect it to be labeled balcony righty in your file. Just <laughs> it's clearly a mistake, but it's just you know, you don't know that. I could just be. I maybe maybe I'm just trying to be funny. All right. Okay, so balcony righty uh, wants to go at location x seventy six point zero zero nine nine y thirty point zero seven five nine and z fifty point four nine two zero. All right. It's in the balcony, which means I probably need to go to my other part of the drawing, right? It's going to be over here. So I'm going to move my UCS now to here. So UCS, and I'm going to pop it there. X goes that way. There we go. So let's go find that spot. Here's what I would prefer to do. Um, I'm going to just move some stuff over here so I can see what I'm doing. There you go. There's the location. So what I'm going to start by doing is I'm just going to set, say point, and it says specify a point. Where do you want it to go? And I'm going to say 76.0099 comma 30.0759. So x goes first and then goes y. Okay, I'm not worrying about z right now because I'm in the ground plan view. So I just hit enter, and look, a little point pops up. That's the spot. See it right here? Now maybe you're like, hey, that point is way too small. I will never spot that in a million years. Uh, go to format and say point style. And you can say, I want my points to be in absolute units, five units. I'm gonna, I want these points to be five feet, so I will never possibly miss them. Okay, there it is. Now it's now it's a five foot little <laughs> X. Okay, this is just for you to figure out where you're gonna put put this last figure you're about to draw. How do you, how do you change the point style? Go to format, point style. Right. So you're gonna say absolute units five units, and that'll make it five feet. And you can, if you want, if you like your points to look different than I like mine, you can change what the symbol looks like too. That's nice. Okay, so that is where the balcony righty needs to go. Okay, mm -hmm. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and now this now this is a DMBE zero, and you could look that up, but if you did look it up, you would know that it's about that big. Okay, it's probably five inches, five six inches by four inches. By four inches, right? Kind of small. I'm not probably not going to draw it that small. Okay, so I'm just going to do my little rectangle here, and I'm just going to draw it a size that I think is reasonable to be able to see it. No idea how big that is, but I, I think I'll be able to see that. Okay. Now, where do I put it? I would like to put it so the front middle, because that's where the sound comes out, I want that to be where the insertion point is. Okay, So I'm going to say front midpoint, and I'm going to tack that onto the center line, or center point of my little node point I made. See? There it is. Now guess what I can do? Delete my point, because it's now in the right spot. Okay. Now I'm gonna. Now the th next thing I want to do is hatch it. So I'll go ahead and you know, ultimately this would be by layer. So we'll do that. So you just do hatch, type hatch, select solid, and then click inside the box, and you'll get it filled in. Okay. Now 
I got to figure out where does it point. Let's go see what the aim point says. Aim point says 97.4036 on the x and 30.0744 on the y. I'm going to do the same process, okay? I'm just going to type point and I'm going to type 97.4036 comma 30.0744. There it is. That's where I want it to point. Uh, so it looks like that's straight on. But if it was not, uh, just to make sure, because you're not always sure if, that, if the aim point, because you're going to get these aim points out of something like ease, right? So you're going to create this ease file that has all these virtual things in it, and ease is going to tell you this is, the, this is the XYZ place where this thing goes, this is the XYZ place where it points. So you really will get a list of coordinates like this out of ease. Um, and you don't always know that this is necessarily perfectly straight on. So let's just make sure that our box is actually oriented correctly so that it's pointed out. Because let's say the point actually was going to be, maybe the point would actually be here. And what I don't want to do is just draw a line from here to there because that's bendy sound, <laughs> right? So uh, what I would want to do instead, let me show you how, how you would do this. So you're going to do a command called rotate, and it's RO, enter, and then I'm going to select the box, uh, enter, then it says specify base point. The base point is going to be the front center of the box, and then it says, uh, Rotate, specify angle. So you can do this, right? But just to make sure that I get it right, I want to do, you can do copy or reference. So type R for reference. And what is the reference angle? And the reference angle is, uh, I would just go between those two midpoints. So I know that's, that's what I'm considering zero is between the center front and the center back, OK? And then, I, yeah, I just move it, and I say, boom, there. And now I can actually just draw a line from that center to that point, and I'm done, OK? But of course, that is not where the actual point goes. It really goes here. So I'm going to do that whole thing again. Rotate, select objects. That's my base point. Reference would be there. Oops, hang on. I did it the wrong way. Base point, reference, you're going to want to do back to front. There we go. And now I'll intersect it with that node. Now I know it's pointing in the right direction, and I will draw my line. And you know what? I'm going to leave that big point x right where it is. Um, because if I'm going to hand this off to somebody and you know, they're, they're not necessarily going to whip out a scale rule and figure out like exactly where they're just going to look and see, oh, where is that going to point? Um, and maybe you've got a drawing that even has seats in it. If it does, they're just going to, oh, it's that seat. And they're going to be up on a ladder, and they're not going to whip out a tape measure when they're up on a ladder in the balcony of Stevens Center. They're just going to look at the drawing and go, oh, it's there, <laughs> right? So I'm going to leave that X right where it is so they can use that as a visual reference point. Because the truth be told, if it's a little bit off, not the end of the world. Well, now I got to label it. Do you want that line going from yeah, I do. Okay. Yep. So you would also now label it, okay. just like you would, you know, and you use your text style for your last bigger labels from your system diagram and just put it in there. It should whatever label you have next to the box here should be the exact same label that is in your system diagram. Okay, it should say the exact same thing in the exact same way using the exact same textile, so that there's absolutely no confusion that it is the same thing. Okay, Now, what about the Z? Yeah. Because there's another place of, where, of that aim, right? Where does it aim vertically? And where do I put it vertically? Because if all I did was the ground plan, 
I might be saying that this is going to, I'm going to put this in the seat on the floor. Because I haven't, you know, the ground plan doesn't tell me where in the air it goes. So I have to use the section to do that. So here's what we're going to do. There's a, there's a cheat you can do with this particular drawing that I'm not going to show you, but I'll show it, show it to you after I show you the hard way. So the hard way is to move your UCS. So you're going to say UCS again, and you're going to zoom in. And this time, your origin is going to be the plaster line and the stage. So this is the plaster line. You see it, that upstage edge of this plaster concrete area? So there it is. You're going to put it right there at the stage level and the plaster line. And where is X? X goes out to the audience. I'm not sure I got that in the right place. Let me make sure. There we go. All right, X goes out to the audience. Now, uh, you could rotate your UCS so that Z actually points up, but it makes things behave really strangely in a 2D drawing. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're just going to use Y in place of X, okay? So for your section drawing, Y is going to be, or Y in place of Z. Yeah. So Y is just going to stand in for Z, because this is, Z is really only used when you're drawing in 3D in CAD. Uh, and while you could make Z show up if you really wanted to in a 2D drawing, I would not recommend that, because then, you know, Trying to draw using your mouse while Z is in a weird place makes all your points show up in the wrong spot. So we're just going to use Y in place of Z. Okay. So if you put your hover your mouse over that spot now, you should see zero comma zero comma zero, right? Okay. So now I'm going to plop another point in. And this will be the, the location. So x would be 76.0099 comma what? Zero. Yeah, the z-coordinate, 50.4920. That's where it's going to go. I'm going to mount it to the top of that cornice piece in the balcony. That's exactly where it's going to be. And in, re in, in real life, I actually do have a couple of little bolts that we've screwed into the wall that seem to center up of that cornice for this very purpose. Okay, so that's where it's going to go. And now what I'm going to do, just for consistency's sake, is I'm going to take this same box and just copy it and put it here. Make sure that I get that front of it right there. And you're saying, but Jason, it's half of it is going to be up in the attic. I was like, no, it won't, because in real life it's much smaller than this. I'm just trying to show where it goes. Okay. And yes, I would probably want to create a little rigging diagram that had it in the actual size and a close-up view showing exactly how that bolt goes in. But we haven't learned how to do that yet. I'm going to teach you how to do that later. Yes. Okay. Not using Z earlier, but now we're using Z on this so uh, Z is up. Okay. So uh, Matt, this is your UCS, right? So you've got X going that way, Z go or Y going that way. Z is up. Okay. Z. You only really need Z if you are drawing in three dimensions, okay. right? So in CAD, you could actually draw a three-dimensional object. This is not a three-dimensional drawing. This is a two-dimensional drawing. Only X and Y were used when drawing this drawing. But for the section, which is, which is this view, what we've done is we have actually taken an enormous knife the size of the Stevens Center, and we have cut the building in half <laughs> and opened it up, and now we're looking inside of it uh, from the side. Uh, so in this case, Z, if it existed in this drawing, you know, if this was a 3D drawing, Z would be here, right, going up to the ceiling. Yeah. But this is not a 3D drawing. This is a 2D drawing. So 
we're going to just infer that z exists, even though it doesn't actually exist in this drawing, Be because it's a 2D drawing. So we are going to use y it, to represent z, just because we, z, we don't actually have z. But in real life, z exists, right? In real life, there is up, <laughs> right? In the Stevens Center, up exists. But in this drawing, up does not e technically exist because this is a 2D drawing. So it's just we're just replacing for purposes of making our lives simple uh, and not having to worry about rotating our UCS all over the place. We're just going to say y is going to, for purposes of the section view, y is going to be up. And we're going to use all those y values in place of z. Right. Right. So z is always going to be up in real life because this the x y z here is the actual spot that that point is going to go in real life in the real Stevens Center, right? right? And so if I'm trying to figure out where I want to put that loudspeaker vertically in the room, that is z. That's always z, and I only use that when I'm looking at it in the section view. <laughs> so if you have a box that's cubed, right? And the kind of straight section. You have three different ways you can go, right? X, Y, and Z. Right. I understand that Z is up. Actually, yeah. I understand that. I I guess I'm just asking when when am I using Y in place of Z? Because the first the first thing we plot it, yeah. we Right. 30. Yep. But the second one, we use the 50. Yeah. So it's only in the section. So when you're looking at the section view, so that's, which, so is, which is this. Whether you're looking at it from the top down or from the side. If you're looking at it from the side, you have to see up and down. If yeah. you're looking at it from the top, you can't tell the difference. Anytime you want to go vertically in the drawing, which is only going to be in the section view, only this view. you use Z. Okay. So only that view. Everywhere else in this drawing, x is x and y is y. Only in this view does y stand in for z. For z. So yeah. I'm plotting. So I'm really trying to grasp this. Okay. Um, so, so this y is actually the center of the drawing. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about yeah. anything else. Probably not. Um, so the balcony one, because that's going to hang in the balcony in real life, I just need to put it on the part of the, the drawing where I can see the balcony. Okay. And I can see the balcony in yeah. this part, right? So right. I probably wouldn't put it here because, okay. you know, the balcony isn't part of this. Mm -hmm. So I'll put it here, and then I'll put it here because this is where I can see the, the vertical location of the balcony. Okay. okay, okay. This is just extra. You're probably not going to use this one over on the left. Okay. Um, that was just created by the TD to give you another way of looking at it. And it, and it actually has to do with how they drew it. They needed a, a reference point in order to draw it that way, but not super important. Yes? So we found that it says that each of these things are going to be, like each thing is going to be a different color, right? Yes. Um, so are we creating a new layer for these things? Because right now I, we're just drawing a layer of zero. Right. So are we just going to create a new layer that has like all the same properties? That's what I would do. So I would create a layer for each system. And yeah. by and, and by system, I mean so like center cluster, those three are part of a system. So I would do a, yeah, I would do a layer for center cluster. So center cluster would be a system. Yep. Front fills would be a system. Under balcony would be a system. Balcony would be a system. Yep. So. Okay. So you would put your section and your top view both in that same layer? So like where your front fill is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. We're almost done with this, putting this one in. So we've got it now in the right spot, the loudspeaker in the right spot, but where is the aim point? So I'm going to draw another point, and in this case, I'm going to do 97.4036 for the x, and then I'm going to use the z value here because I'm in the section, so 50.185. That's where it aims. 
Okay. So I'm gonna I can get rid of my little my point here, and now I'm just gonna rotate my box same way I did before. So we're gonna rotate. I'm gonna select this. Oops, I don't want to get part of the cornice there. Let's just do that. There we go. Base point is gonna be there, and I'll do reference for the angle from here to there, and now I can intersect it with that little spot and now I can draw a line from there to there. Did you ever use the angle from the call out? Um, sometimes, but not very often because what I have found, and I don't know why, is that they're almost always wrong. Really? <laughs> well, the um, yeah, like the drawing maybe is messed up, or maybe you know you when you actually go to rig this, you're not able to get the center of that in just the spot you think it is. Like maybe the chain motor takes up some space that you didn't think it was going to take, and everything is up a little bit lower. Like it just never that angle is never right. Um, so what I always prefer to just do the aim point. And then what I'll do is if I have the ability to do this, I'll just get a little laser pointer or a distance finder, there, and I'll literally just stick it on the front, or sometimes I'll even just use my flashlight. And I'll just stick it on the front of the last speaker, and as I'm manipulating the vertical angle, I'll just watch to see when the light hits the spot in the room where my little X is. And I go, mm, okay, that's where it goes. It doesn't matter what angle that is, right? But I've almost, I've very rarely had that angle be right. Um, Again, there are people, I know sound people that are like, hey, you must put the angles and you must put the dimensions and everything. And I just, uh, I mean, I just feel like it's wasted work because you almost always change it when you go into the space. So I prefer to just say, this is where it points. This is where it goes, ish, <laughs> right? Get it as close to that spot as you possibly can in real life and then make sure you aim it here. Um, and whatever angle and whatever thing you got to do to the bracket to make that happen, just do that, you know? Uh, so, uh, yeah, now that I've got that, what I would do is let's create a layer here for my, I'll do sound balcony fills. Um, and I will switch over to that layer. And we're going to, I'll change the color of that. Oops. I'll make that, in this case, don't pick any of those default colors. I'm going to do that, that green. What's that? OK. So now I'm going to take these things I've drawn and put them on that layer that I just made. I'll look at that in a minute. So now I'll go down to this one, do the same thing. This now will also go into there. Now I gotta figure out why it's transparent. Why is my little hatch transparent? That is. That's weird. Oh, it's actually probably because of the order of these things. It's probably just because of the order of the layers. Like, I probably have to move the layers. Um, no, I moved the fill too. I'm wondering if I put this up here, if it changes anything. No. Oh, there it goes. I regen, and then it was good. OK, so here's what I want you to do. I've given you just barely enough information to start tackling this. So in our last 30 minutes, I want you to try to do this. So uh, that's when you know the parts of this that are not entirely landing right now will land once you try to do it. 
okay? Um, and I'll talk you through it. So try now to actually make one that is not the one that I showed you uh, <laughs> and see if you can get it to be in the right spot. Yeah. For the section view, it's the intersection of the plaster line and the stage floor. So it's here. So you can see that the plaster line is the upstage part of this concrete wall here. So it's the intersection of that line and the stage level. So yeah, you're going to move that UCS around an awful lot. My suggestion, just to save yourself a little bit of time, would be to uh, just draw everything in that ground plan view first for the balcony, and then draw the other the, the orchestra level ground plan view, and then draw everything in the section view. So you only have to move the UCS three times, um, and then you just you're going to go through those coordinates and put them in whenever it's appropriate. But for, today, for now, just for the testing purposes, go ahead and draw one thing in, all the, in both of the views that you need to and make sure that you can do that. And I'll help you if you get stuck. So for the, for the three balcony spaces in the section view, are you only going to see one of them? Oh, great question. So yeah, so here's where this gets a little tricky, right? Is that if you actually tried to draw all, all four of these E0s in the section view, you'd find that they're, uh, they have the same x and z values to them. It's the y that changes. That's because they're spread out across the top of that cornice. So yeah, in the section view, you only need to draw one of them. Okay. Right? Because I'm, I'm going to go move my more drawing. Oh, we had already done this one. Yeah. We're done with the balcony. Yeah. In the, the balcony gets done in, in the, the section, section view. Correct. Okay, cool. Yep. Because cool. you don't need to do the other three because you won't see them. So can you just move your balcony? Yeah. So I would do balcony, you know, left, center, right, whatever, whatever. I just put them all the labels together, right? So, because um, I, I said, yeah. So you would do balcony, left, right, mid, left, mid, right, and just put that all together into one label. Uh, so it's all of them, just with separated by commas. So you know that's four separate ones. So left, right, mid, left, mid, right. Yeah. Just write all of those things. Cool. And you can, if you wanted to be like super clear, no, no, no. you could do. That center line, just put commas. Yeah. Instead of saying just mid left uh -huh. for that one, you would say mid left comma mid right comma left comma. And then if you wanted to be super clear next to balcony, you could just let's say in parentheses four x, <laughs> four times. I got four of these, right? Cool. But in the ground plan view, you would actually do all four labels, right? Because you'd be able to see all four of them in the ground plan view. So look here. If I'm here in the section, they're all stacked. So look at all four of them have the same x, z coordinates, yeah. right? But if you go into the ground plan view, you're going to have one here, 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 and here. So you could actually draw, you could actually label them individually in the ground plan. So you would, you could use these these labels, all of them, yeah. right, for each each of the four, because you'll be able to see all four of them. Okay, and then do you want the labels to like be red or left side or do you want them to be neutral? You decide what you think is the most clear. Okay. Uh, and then we'll see if I think it's the most clear. Okay. <laughs> okay. So give it a shot. Um, the, the balcony is the longer one. Because the balcony in real life, and you can see it in the section view, the balcony goes further back than, right? Yeah. So if yeah. So if it was me, I would draw the balcony ones over here, and I would probably draw the center cluster ones here, yeah. right? Because they're high up in the air, right? And then I would draw the front fills in this one and the under balconies in this one. Because they're more on the same 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So they're basically the same point. Okay. I would just treat them as the same because they are the same, actually. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. They just need to be big enough so that we can see them. All right? Yeah. Yeah. Big enough to see them. I shouldn't have to zoom in to see them. <laughs> like, I should literally be able to be at this zoom level and see all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Front, front fills, under balconies. And probably the there's a mixed fit position one as well. That one I that one I would put. Yeah, in the in the middle one, yeah. Because that's where the the person mixing the show is not gonna mix it from the balcony, they're gonna be down at the orchestra level. So the section one should only have the balcony. It'll have all of them. So the section view will have all of them because you can see all of it. So yeah. So you're going to end up with center cluster is going to actually show up like here, here, and here, right? If you draw all three of them, okay? Balcony's here. Under balcony is going to show up like here. Mixed position fill is going to be about there. Front fill is going to be about there, right? Let me show you something. This might help. Um, this is basically what you're going to end up with. Um, okay. So. The only difference is here is I actually I, I did I drew the center cluster in the middle one, but you know you could put it in this in either is fine, but this is this is what you're going to end up with is here's your here's your balcony and you've got your balcony fills there with their labels, you've got you know here's front fills there's your center cluster ones, here's your under balconies, there's your mixed position fill, and then in the section view, here's everything. Center cluster, front fill, under balcony, mix fill, balcony. It doesn't really matter um, because you can see whether you put the center cluster and the front fills up here or down here, it doesn't really matter because you can see that location in either of these. So you won't have to draw this no. Okay. You, you can put them in either of these. What I wouldn't want you to do is to put the under balconies in this one right, because you would not be able to see them <laughs> in real life, right? So can I put a chair next to me? If you really want to, I suppose, but. <laughs> if you want to, I mean. All right. Yeah, so this is, you know, you, you, have to, you have to do some spatial analysis, which is really hard to do for the human brain. Um, yeah, it takes, it takes some practice to wrap your head around it. Because you have to think back to the days of hand drafting. In the days of hand drafting, we had to figure out how to draw a theater on a piece of paper, yeah. some, a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional sheet of paper. So this is what we came up with. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, well, we could like cut it in half horizontally and be looking down at it, and we can get that information. 
and then we could cut it in half vertically and look at it from the side and get that information. And then we just, in our minds, have to connect those two bits of information together because we can't actually draw it on the paper. Um, even, even though in CAD, we could draw it in three dimensions. Yeah. We usually don't because we just got in the habit of doing this ground plan section nonsense. Can I look at how you did the Yeah. Right, so I just literally took the same information from here and it's there. Right. Somewhere I have an actual three-dimensional drawing of the Stevens Center, but it's impossible to, I mean, you think this is hard to read? You know, trying to read an actual three-dimensional drawing in AutoCAD on a two-dimensional screen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I, every once in a while, we'll get like a, a student TD that's all gung-ho and like, I'm gonna do a 3D drawing of the theater. And they send it to us, and it's like, thanks, dude. I'm just going like, to do this. I'm going to look at this from the side and look at this from the top. Right? I'm not going to like pan and orbit around this theater. <laughs> <laughs> All Yeah. Okay. Cuz I, I added that in and it went to the same spot. So yep. those those points overlap. Yeah. So even though they're different colors cuz they don't line up, they overlap. Doesn't matter. In fact, you could just have one point and call them all the same. Well, now it's already drawn there. Okay. It's the same point. What I've seen some people do is they'll go in and actually uh, rotate the points around so you can see them all. So oh. like this one is a is a X Right? right, and then they'll do another one that's like a T, right, in a different color, and another one that's a, like a square, and a, <laughs> but I think that's. It doesn't really matter. I don't really care. Yeah, well. right. Yep. Yes. Yeah, probably because they're in the same spot. So you'll, I think you'll find if you start trying to draw the boxes, you'll see that the center clusters. You can see three of them in the section view, but you'll probably have a harder time seeing them separately in the ground plan view because they'll overlap a little bit, depending on how big you draw your boxes. Um, so I think it literally is like, just try to draw it where it says, and if you realize there's already something there, <laughs> then it's like, oh, okay, I don't have to draw this. two of these if they're overlapping completely. All right, I'm going to stop the video.